Okay, yeah, so thank you, thank you for your Penn State email, just for attendance purposes. This is a pretty short um, chapter this week. It's pretty important, um, but it's definitely, you know, a lot of the concepts are kind of, um, you know, put together in a review. So uh, the first thing I do want to talk about are the five different probability rules that we do have in statistics. So our first one means that our probabilities have to be between zero and one. So that means that they're between um, it being impossible, so a probability of zero, and then it being certain, which is a probability of one. And so that means that basically it can't be less than zero and it can't be greater than one. Um, so anytime you see something and you're trying to decide is this a probability or not, um, that's one rule that you can use to make sure. And then also when you're checking your answers, um, if one of your answers is if you get like, oh, the probability is 1.2, you can check your answer and realize that's not true because um, your probability is never going to be between, um, or is, is never gonna be outside of this boundary here. So, um, so yeah, that's where we get that from. Um, all right, our second one says that we add individual probabilities together if they can't happen simultaneously in order to find the probability that at least one of them occurs. So that's a lot of words, so let's kind of break that up. So this is saying that we're going to add them together. So we're going to use addition. And then if we're trying to find out if they can happen simultaneously, so that means they can't happen at the same time. And then if you want to find the probability that at least one of them occurs. Okay, so we'll do some examples. So um, if I'm trying to find out, so let's say the probability of me going to class tomorrow is 0 0.2. And then the probability, <laughs> I just made that up. It's not that low. I'm actually going to class, I promise. Um, but let's just say it is. So let's say the probability of me going to class. And then the probability of me eating lunch is 0.4. And then if these can't happen at the same time, so if I can't go to class and I can't eat lunch at the same time, maybe they're at, they're at the same time, but we're trying to find the probability of at least one of them occurring, then we would just add them together. And that's going to give us, so there's a probability of 0.6 that I either, um, that I either at least go to class or to lunch. So it makes sense because saying there's a 40% chance I go to lunch, there's a 20% chance I go to class. Um, so together that's 60%. They can't happen at the same time. So um, that's why we can add them together there. So that's just an example there. <laughs> Um, number three, one minus the chance of, the, this one's so confusing when you read it like this, um, but we'll explain it. So one minus the chance of the opposite thing is the chance of something. Interesting. So let's say our chance of something is going to be that it's sunny. Okay. So the chance of it being sunny is going to be 80%, I wish. So 0.8. But um, so let's say the opposite thing would be cloudy. So what this is trying to get at is saying that like one minus cloudy equals sunny. Because remember your probabilities, all of them together do have to equal one. Um, so, so this is what we're saying. So one minus, and we're gonna say cloudy is the opposite thing in this case. And then sunny is the um, something, okay? And please stop me if you guys aren't following at all, because I understand these things can be a little bit confusing. So we'll say something is sunny and then the opposite of sunny in this case, we'll just say it's not spell, cloudy. Okay, I already wrote that, whoops. So one minus the opposite thing is the thing. So we found out that, um, it's, that we have an 80% chance of being sunny. So if we want to find out the probability of being cloudy, we just do one minus cloudy equals, and we know our probability of be, it being sunny is 0.8. And then if we go ahead and do some algebra, algebra we're gonna find that the probability that it's cloudy is going to be 0 0.2. So that's all that's saying um, is just, you know, how you would find something um, in terms of, you know, how they're related. So, cause you know, it's either gonna be sunny or cloudy given the fact that those, you know, theoretically if those were the only two weather options for tomorrow, that's what it would, that's how you would use that. Um, okay, number four, finding the probability of independent events by multiplying their chances together. So independent means that they're not related. Um, so just a review for that. So they're not related, they don't affect each other. Um, so if you find that um, events are independent, then you can multiply their chances together. Um, so for example, let's think of things that are independent. Let's say, so the chance that I go to class tomorrow, and then the chance that um, 
there the chance that it snows. So theoretically, unrelated. Don't, this is not like, if it snows like that would make me not want to go to class. This is like, like in turn, okay, no, no. Oh, this is, okay, yeah, wait. Uh, <laughs> the chance of there being class and then the chance of it raining. So unrelated, if it rains, that doesn't affect if you have class. If you have class, it doesn't affect if it rains. They're independent. If you want to find um, the probability of those events together, um, you just multiply them because they're unrelated, which means that you can uh, multiply them by each other because they don't have anything in common. Um, so it's okay to multiply them then. So um, you'll learn that we do this for like and probabilities. Um, and then this one up here that we were talking about is like for or probabilities. Okay, and then lastly, if the ways in which one event can happen are a subset of the ways that a second event can happen. So, so let's say event. Um, so if the ways in which one event can happen are a subset of the ways that a second event happens, then the first event cannot have a higher probability. So let's say that this is event one and this is event two. Okay, so um, say, this is basically saying that if event one is a subset of event two, so it hap has to happen first, um, then the first event can't have a higher probability. Um, and that makes sense because in order to, for event two to happen, event one has to have already happened. So the, um, there can't be a higher probability because that means that you know, every time that event two happens, event one has already happened. So it's gonna be more likely for it. So um, just think of it in the way that, you know, if, and you'll learn, you know, if, like a probability of, you know, an event given that something happened, that's like a conditional probability. Um, so a subset of the ways that the second event, so basically if one event precedes another event, that first event can't have a higher probability um, because, the probability is gonna be higher if the second event happens because obviously the first event had to have already happened. And this is only if, you know, the one event is a subset. Um, so that one's a little tricky. Um, this one helps if you do practice. I mean, all of these do help if you do practice problems, but I think number five is one where I would definitely, um, you know, go through your homework and find practice problems for those um, to, if you don't understand that one, but okay. Woo, what's next? <laughs> Okay, so expected value. This is something we talk about in statistics when we're trying to um, find like an average of something over, um, over time. So, you know, we talked about before that, you know, when you have data, you have like the initial data, but you don't want to extrapolate and, you know, take data sets out farther. But if we um, have something that we think is going to be consistent over time and we want to find the average of that measurement as time goes on, we can do the expected value. So, when we're doing an expected value, um, the main idea here is that you want to make sure you keep together the value that you're looking at and the chance of that value. So, um, and then the definition, sum of all the possible values times the probability. So like I just said, so, um, so the value here, 50, this is one value. I'll just say this is value one, and then this is going to be probability one. And then we'll say that 70 is value two. And then, nope, sorry, incorrect. Then we'll say that 10 is value two. And then 70 is probability two. That is why we go down here and multiply, see our probability one times our value one, and then probability two times our value two. Um, and then that's gonna give you your long run average. This is basically saying that, you know, there's a 30% chance of making $50. So if you were to keep making $50, if, or like if time were to go on and you made, there's like a 30% chance of you making $50, and then you add that to the, that 70% chance that you make $10, adding these together is giving you that average. So saying that over time, you'll probably make $22. So this is the average over time. So you see, you can either make 50 or 70, there's a higher chance that you make 70, lower chance that you make 50. Um, and then, I'm sorry, <laughs> there's a higher chance that you make 10 and then a lower chance that you make 50. So that's why you see how this number is like, it, it's logical, it's closer to 50 than it is, or I'm sorry, it's closer to 10 than it is 50 because um, there's a higher chance of getting just $10, but there still has that chance of getting 50. So that's why it raises a little bit from 10. Um, but that's why we can say that 
over time, you know, if you were to complete this every, if this was like a scratch off or something that every day you do it over time, you would make like $22 on average. That's the main idea of expected value. Okay. All right, and then the law of large numbers. This is basically saying, this is another idea of kind of looking forward. So um, if the, so when there are more trials, while sums or counts are likely to be more variable, this is gonna be, so the averages, like we were just talking about in the last um, slide, so the averages or proportions are likely to be stable when we have more trials, but then the sums within those, so not the averages, just the sums themselves are gonna be more variable. So this is basically saying that, you know, as we, if we were to do expected, um, the expected count, those averages are gonna be more stable the more trials we do. However, the more trials you do, the more chance you have of having more variable counts, um, you know, cause you can really, if it is indeed random, you can choose anything there. Um, so, and then this does not happen by compensation for a bad of um, run luck since independent trials have no memory. So this means that, um, you know, let's say that you you had a, a a bad run of luck and you got like ten dollars a hundred times in a row or something um there's no such thing as you know um like it's there's no such thing as an independent trial then like compensating for that and making up for it and then all of a sudden getting a bunch of trials of 50. that's not how it works it's just saying that those counts are going to be variable and that's just the nature of statistics and of random um, randomization and whatnot um so that's the law of large numbers basically just saying um so if we were to draw it out like this um so the averages are going to be more stable and then our um sums or counts so we'll just say sums or counts is going to be more variable so these are gonna change more. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's just a, a law in statistics there. Alrighty. All right, let's try a review. So true or false, when you flip a thumbtack into the air, it can land point up or point down. Since there are just two possibilities, the chance of each one must be 50%. So let me know what answer you guys think for this and then we will talk about it. Okay, I don't know what should happen. There. Okay, so let's think of this one. So the answer is false, but let's make sure we understand why it is false. Okay, so 50%, um, this is also equal to 0 0.5. Um, so a probability of 0 0.5, because remember, probabilities always have to be between 0 and 1. Okay. And this is in terms of decimals, but 50% is equal to a probability of 0 0.5. That doesn't mean half of a percent. It just means 0.5, which is 50%. Because what you do to get the 50% is, so in order to find a percent, you take the decimal, and then, I don't know if that's how you spell decimal, then multiply it by 100, and then that's how you get your percent. So if our decimal is a probability of 0.5, and we multiply that by 100, we're going to get our 50%. Okay, yeah, so what we want to think of there is that, so the chance of each one has to be 50. So this is false because um, it's saying, so if you think of a thumbtack, let's get artistic here. If you have a thumbtack looking like this, maybe, um, there's not a 50-50 chance that it's going to land on this end or this end because they're weighted differently. You know, so if you think if you were to throw this up in the air, you know, you don't know where it's going to land because you know, this is heavier, mostly, you know, than this, it's going to be harder for it to land on this end than it will be for that one. So it's not going to be a 50-50 chance. So 
the main idea here is that, you know, it's not like it's a fair coin or anything. They're not weighted the same. There's not, um, you know, there's not just two possibilities. You know, there, there's a very different possibility for each one. So that's why it would be false. Um, so it, it's just because there's two sides doesn't mean it has to be a 50-50 probability. That's not always true. So does that make sense why we figured it out that way? Yippee. All right. All right, let's try this one. So a spinner can land in four possible positions so that all four have the same probability of coming up. Each position must then have a probability of what? So try answering this one, and then we will review it. Okay, good, so let's draw this out. Um, so spinner is always a classic example that's used in probabilities because usually if it is a fair spinner, you know it's gonna have the same probability on each. So um, this is saying that it can land in four possible positions and they all have the same probability. So that means that they all have to be equal. Um, so then each position must have the probability of what? So first you're going to have, so between zero and one, but can't conclude any other information that is not um, we can't do that because we know it is between zero and one, which is good. Um, but so th obviously this one isn't true because it can't be between negative one and one, um, but cannot conclude any other information. Um, but we actually can because since we know that they all have to have the same probability, that means that remember they do have to add up to equal one. So all four of them, you know, when we add them together, add all of these, they're going to equal one. So that means that we know that these are each one fourth. Um, they have to be in order for the probability rules to work. So our answer is going to be B here because they each are going to have to be one fourth there. Does that make sense how we got that one? Yay. All right, cool. Good job. All right. All right, Skittles candies come in five colors and are produced with an equal proportion of orange, red, purple, green, and yellow. A piece of Skittles candy is chosen at random. The chance that it is red or green is what? So try solving this one and then we will talk about it. Good job, absolutely. You guys did a great job with this one. So um, like we talked about in the last one, you know, if they all have an equal probability of getting chosen and there's five of them, that means that we're gonna have, you know, five and then they each have a probability then of 20%. So if we were doing red or green, so the probability of red plus the probability of green, if we're doing or, um, so that means that we're going to add them. So then we do 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2, and then we go ahead and we get 40%. So good job. All right, let's do number four. So this one's the same question, but it's talking about the chance that they're both red. So try this one out.
Okay, so I definitely see what you guys are thinking about. So remember though, when we talk about them being red and being both red, and these are independent from one another because um, it doesn't, if you pick one, it doesn't matter what the other one is. So remember, since they're independent, um, we're gonna use um, multiplication. So what we wanna do is that, so we're having like the probability of red, and then if we're talking about them both being red, multiplied by the probability of the next one being red. So you wanna multiply, remember last time we added them, this time since we're talking about them both, so this is another way of saying and, you know, so it's red and red. Um, so we're gonna multiply them, so 0.2 still, and then times 0.2, and that's gonna end up giving us 0 0.04, which is going to be 4% if we multiply that by 100. So our answer is A. So does that make sense why we multiplied instead of um, added or anything else there? And why we have to keep in mind that there's two that are red? Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so we always, so we multiply for and um, when we have and. And then we are going to add if we have or in the problem. So. Those are just some rules of thumb. All right. Okay, cool. So yeah, go ahead and watch this back in the other reviews on the YouTube channel. Um, our next group review will be next Thursday, already at the end of March. Um, if you guys have other questions for me, please let me know now. If not, you guys are good to go for tonight. I hope you have a good weekend.